So hello and good Monday everybody, this is Ruth Pozzolo from Curval.com and in today's video I am going to show you all the amazing features that the Power BI team has released this summer. So I will summarize July and August updates for you when it comes to reporting. So how about we get started? I'll see you at the end! Okay, so this is the summary of the reporting features for the July and August, at least my favorite. They pack it with great, great, great things. And um, let me show you. The first thing I want to talk about is something that they call the wallpaper. And the wallpaper you can only access if you click on outside, you know, any of the elements. You can't have anything of those clicked. And then on the paintbrush, you will see wallpaper. If you click on any of the elements, it will disappear, right? Because the wallpaper is applied to the background page. So instead of telling you what it is, let me show you much easier. So you pick a color. And as you can see, that grayish background thing color, you can change it with wallpaper. Um, standings. It doesn't apply to all pages. You need to do it one by one, which is a good thing and it's a bad thing. Uh, I wish there would be a button that would say apply all or not, but I guess it's coming. So this gives you the possibility to configure that. So now I'm sure you're asking yourself, does this work in Power BI service? How about we try it? We go to publish this, save. Publishing now. Let's go and check it out. I just made Edge my <laughs> default browser. Working quite good so far. Okay, can you give me the report, please? So here it is. As you can see, the wallpaper persists. So you will have it available on the Power BI service too, which is great. Um, as you can see here, you can have images instead of painting. Be careful with the colors, you know, it can look very good and it can be death. So you could have a picture as a background image instead and then you, it's, it's, they've done quite a nice job just to popping up the report and I think it looks quite okay. But again, be careful with colors because this is perhaps not that good. You want to focus on the data, not on the background. Um, but that is quite a neat feature, right? So in case you didn't know, that's how that thing works. Um, the next thing I want to show you is uh, a new feature. This was released in the August update. You can go here to file export to PDF and it will generate a PDF report, a PDF of your report. Um, there are a few things to say about this. Number one, um, you can't choose which pages to send to your PDF. You will have to modify your PDF afterwards, okay? Number two, I've got this white frame here. I don't know why, because I don't have any custom size. This is the size of the page is 16.9. So I don't know why it's showing me that frame and it's showing it on each page, as you can see. So that is a pity, actually. Uh, another thing. Uh, of course, this is not a live report. I like my reports alive and kicking, but it might be, you know, situations where you might uh, want them as PDF. Here's what you can do. Nothing will work. This is just as dead as it looks. The things that do work are the links. So any link that you have in the report, it will be uh, kept. So you could have a link to the actual live Power BI report. I really recommend you to do that. Um, what else? The uh, wallpaper won't be printed, not yet. These are, this is a custom visual, and as you can see, it gets printed. I have to say, 
I print this before and it, this didn't show up, not the map either. So print a few times and it might work for you. Uh, and yeah, that is quite cool, isn't it? So is the function available in Power BI service? If we go here and we go to file, there is no export to PDF, just JET, okay? So if you need to print them on PDF, you can do it on Power BI desktop first. So it's file, export to PDF, and then you are done, okay? Now, something more I want to show you. Do you see these headers? You know, these are the headers that we have had in Power BI for ages and they were so annoying. You can see that there is this much space that can be used for anything else. Well, they've changed that. So even if this is the new version of Power BI, as you can see, I don't have the new headers. To get those on an old report, you have to go here. Options and report settings here. Use the modern visual header, okay? And when you do, as you will see, everything will move. So you will have to move this around to make it fit. One of the things I noticed, it was like, sometimes it was not so easy to grab them. Uh, for a slicer seems to work quite well. This is a bit big, let's make it a bit small. So you will have to rearrange your canvas. Maybe that is something that you don't want to do, depending on what your report is. Um, but just be aware of that. So as you can see, this thing uh, disappears and you can have them high up. This is absolutely lovely. What I found that sometimes it's very difficult to grab this thing. I'm not having any problem now. I don't know why. But if you are having issues, just grab them by the dot, so as you can see there. Okay. And then you have here on the pane everything that you want to know about this visual new visual headers experience. You can change the border, you can change the icon colors, you can oh, you have a lot of options as to how these things should behave, okay? So make sure that you give that a go and you check it out to see. You see that it, the icon colors are changing and to see if that is something that it will work for you. But I really, really love these things because it just gets so much easier to fit things in the canvas. The annoying thing is that for all reports, you have to rearrange everything, unfortunately. But uh, moving on, before, you know, the tool tips, uh, I've done a video about tool tips. This is our tool tip for this report. We're not available on matrix and tables. The good things now is that they are. So as you can see here, I have a tool, tool, <laughs> tool tip for teams. And as you can see, nothing is popping up here. So if you go, you pick the chart. This is the difficult part today to pick something without clicking. So you have better to click on there, dot, dot, dot. And if you go to tooltip, you enable it. You have to enable it. And now look what happens. Ooh. <laughs> this is super cool, right? It is working on tables and metrics. Really, really good. Something else I've worked on is an improved sorting. So you have here sort by, and then all the columns that you have in here, you can sort by if you want. So this is quite nice. Um, we have another thing. Let me show you. If we have, I don't know, club, and you have this as a slicer, you have, you know, if you filter by more than one, when you have a drop down box and you do that, you get multiple selections here, but you don't get it when you have it a list. 
So I pick something, I left it picked, let's say like it's like that, and you can't see that they're selected by multiple things when it's a long list, it's a problem. So you can now go to items, no, there is slicer header, and turn this on. And you see what happens? Multiple selections. I think this should be on by default. I, I don't even think this should be an on off button. It should just be there. Okay, so um, either way, you have it available now in case you need it. Um, another thing I want to talk about is this. So when you go here to the marketplace, to the custom visual marketplace, you will start seeing these, you know, verified icons. They look like the Twitter ones. And what this means is this is a Power BI Microsoft certified visual. You go in there and you will see that the visuals that are actually Power BI certified. So you can just go and pick from those only. Um, what I have discovered, though, is that if you go and look at the app source and to, uh, try to look for your visuals in here, not directly from Power BI, there is no Power BI certified thing here and there are no icons close to the visuals. So you can't do this directly in here. Another thing that I was asking myself is, okay, what is a Power BI certified visual? And uh, I searched by it, and here is the process to get it certified. It says a certified custom visual is one that has met a set of code requirements and passed security tests. And this is how you would get your visual certified. These are the requirements and how you submit, but what I am missing, I haven't found, let me know if you found it, is like, what does it mean? What does it mean for me as a user that a Power BI visual has been certified? It's just not clear for me. Does it mean that one of the things that I would like to have for custom visuals is to know if my data is being sent through the internet for whatever reasons. I would like to see that, and I would like to have a Power BI if it is powered by VI certified, it would be great to know, oh, they don't send data through the internet. Or they do, but they do it safely or something like that. So it is great, but I think we need to have more transparency as to what a Power BI certified visual means as a customer. Okay, not as a developer, but as a customer. So hopefully it will come up. I mean, this is quite new. So who knows? The last thing I want to talk about is it is directly and indirectly related to reporting. Let me show you preview features. Oh, one more thing in the preview features, you will see that theming is not here. So, you know, creating Power BI theme, JSON files is now officially a feature. So you will not have to turn it on anymore here, which is great. And they have added some uh, fun functionality to theming, but I want to do a separate video for that. So just hold on a second. <laughs> just hold on a while and, and I will make a video. One of the things that people have been cheering on the internet is this Python support, okay? So if you are a data scientist, you had our support before, and now you can do Python too. So you can have Python visuals, Python scripts, and you know, everything. I've played with Python before when I I was playing with my Raspberry Pi. So I, I bought some books and I've done some little coding, not enough for making videos, I think, but I will give it a go in a future video because I think Python is just fun. But uh, yeah, this, this are for me my favorite report because the August update was packed with report um, features and I just love them with Microsoft do it. It just make Power BI so much powerful. So hello and welcome back. What do you think? I think they've made amazing improvements that made Power BI even better. For me, the most 
useful, favorite, uh, awesome feature of all the ones I review is gotta be the headers. It, is, it was a feature that absolutely drive me, drove me nuts. And now it, it, it just makes designing Power BI files so much easier. It's, it's just absolutely wonderful. I really, really like it. I'm just curious, what is your number one feature? Which one do you like the most? Or did I miss something that you would like me to review? So just let me know in the comment box and I'll see you again on Wednesday. Until then, bye.